being on a bike that you don't trust for any reason isn't a good place to be when you're racing. Hello again YouTube and welcome to Friday of Taper Week. So the question is, have I tapered and am I ready? Well, I think the answer to that is, if you ask my wife, have I tapered, she'd say no. We'll talk about my thoughts on tapering. Am I ready? Yeah, I think I am actually, he says, turning the fan on. Um, yeah, I think I am. So the workouts I've done this week, every day for me always begins with a 5K walk uh, with the dogs. And then on Tuesday, I did just a base spin on Zwift. And then at lunchtime, I did a very easy base run. So the, the bike in the morning was, I think it was about an hour all told, and the run was um, not significant, it was about half an hour, 6.15 per kilometre, which was a nice easy run. Then on Wednesday, I did, now this is going to sound stupid, I did a 2 times 20 minute FTP session on Zwift. The reason that I did that was that the Phoenix was suggesting a threshold session. And when I look at the threshold workout this thing was suggesting, it was almost block for block identical to the 2 times 20 FTP on Zwift. So I did it. Now at the time, even I had to question whether that was a smart workout to do in a taper week. But like I say, I'm coming on to my thoughts on tapering. <clears throat> Yesterday, I've always had Thursday as a brick session. And yesterday was no exception. I did a very easy 6.15, 6.20 per kilometre 10k run to wake the legs up. Then I had a, it was about 1500 metre swim, which wasn't anything strenuous. Um, I did put a block of efforts into the middle, um, but you know, I wasn't really pushing it. And then in the evening, I did a team time trial with my tri club, which was kind of preceded by a warm up. If you're going to do a race on Zwift, I can thoroughly recommend the Ineos Grenadiers 30 20 minute warm up session. Um, perfect. And then this morning, I'm into, as you can see, just an extended recovery session to get the legs over last night. Now, I think that if you ask somebody like my wife what tapering means, to her that would be a complete shutdown in the week before you race. To me, that's, I don't think that's a smart way to do it. I think the point of a taper is, and yeah, I think of the definition taper, comes down to a point. So starts big, goes small. So I think the point about a taper is about a gradual reduction in overall load. And of course you can get that reduction in overall load in a couple of ways. You can get it through a reduction in volume, or a reduction in intensity, or a reduction in both. And I think what I've planned to do throughout the week is kind of both of those things whilst still keeping the legs active and fresh and ready to do something. So, I, I must admit, I did think 
I had second thoughts when I was doing the 2 times 20 FTP and I'm still having second thoughts about whether a team time trial last night was a good idea. But let's bear in mind, you know, look at what I'm doing this morning. 150 watts for 40 minutes. Heart rate is just over 100. You know, this is easy base stuff. This is easy recovery stuff. So I think that's the value in the taper. And although I said, you know, I kind of forgotten how to taper, casting my mind back, I think this was a strategy that I've employed before. This don't stop altogether, just lighten the load. And when I think about my training weeks, in the weeks where I've done that, lightened the load, I've always found that after that lightened load, when I made an effort, the efforts were easier. So I think that's the plan. Obviously tomorrow, there won't be a lot going on. It will be just a shakedown on the, the old uh, Greyhound there. Now that brings me on to the Greyhound and the race configuration. So can I just say thank you to everyone that commented under my previous video and helped me get some clarity about what wheels to use. It's got the super teams on it at the moment and the back one is staying up after about 30 meters of PTFE tape and two different valve cores. But on race day, I'm gonna be running the American Classics. I just think it makes sense on so many fronts. Um, you know, the weather looks good at the moment, but who knows with the British weather. So, you know, if there was some rain about, they, the, the alloy braking tracks on those wheels, they break better in the wet. In fact, I think they break better full stop. And there are what looks like a few good fast descents on the course, so added confidence. Um, plus there's also the fact that I don't have to worry about taking valve extenders and getting those sealed up if I get a puncture. I'm just going to be taking a couple of 80mm um, length inner tubes with me. I think on race morning, as I learned at the Dartford Triathlon where I had to run the Greyhound with odd wheels, one of which I think is cracked or has a crack developing. Being on a bike that you don't trust for any reason isn't a good place to be when you're racing. Probably doesn't matter in a short time trial or even a sprint triathlon to be fair uh, where you should, your distances are short and you know albeit you get a puncture on a sprint triathlon that's race over isn't it but um, I think for something that I'm regarding quite seriously like the uh, Beaver Olympic just having a bike I trust completely is worth its weight in gold. So yep, yeah, should be running the American Classics. Now I will be swapping the cassette that I've currently got on there onto the American Classics. Uh, currently the American Classics are running an 11.30 and I've got on these an 11.32. And given that there are a few hills on the course, I think just having a climbing option if I need it will be a welcome thing. So, yep, that's going on. Yeah, so there we are. Very easy spin this morning. It's been, you know, like I say, what some would consider quite a loaded week as a taper. But let's have a look at my numbers on Garmin. Now as you can see, 
Garmin is actually showing that my acute training load is lower. So what does that tell you? That's what you're trying to achieve with a tape a week. And the one counter to the arguments of, you know, well, well-intentioned people like my wife who said, you should be doing nothing. You look at a Grand Tour and look at what goes on on the rest day. They don't sit on their asses all day long. There's usually a rest day ride, which for those guys, the rest of us would call our big ride, you know, but they're doing something. They're keeping the legs and the body moving and they're keeping themselves ready to perform. And I think, you know, that's what you do with a taper week. Put something back in the tank, but keep the engine moving. So tomorrow afternoon, I'm off to Lincolnshire. I'm gonna try and get some footage in on the lead up to the race and race day. And then I'll probably check back in post race when hopefully I'll have a finisher's medal and something a bit more interesting to share. Anyway, welcome to Friday YouTube. Whatever you're doing today, have a good one. And may I wish you a great weekend. And like I say, I'll check in with you when the race is done. Thanks for watching YouTube.